Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about the final subtopic in thermochemistry called von Haber cycle. Von Haber cycle is a series of steps from elements to ionic compound for which all the enthalpies are known experimentally except for lattice energy. Lattice energy that we're interested in this cycle is lattice formations as we're going to discuss further about this in a minute. We are going to apply what we have learned in subtopic 2.3 in this cycle. So, please memorize all the definitions of enthalpy to help you forming correct thermochemical equations. There are five enthalpies involved in this cycle. They are enthalpy of formations, enthalpy of atomizations, ionization energy, electron affinity, and lattice energy. Please keep the order of enthalpies as shown on the slides when answering von Haber cycle. There are two representations of von Haber cycle. One is energy cycle diagram. Second one is energy level diagram. We'll go through both representations using the same example. The most important thing when answering von Haber cycle is the thermochemical equations. Some of the enthalpy have been discussed in lesson video 2.1. Now we're going to look at a few more enthalpies that hasn't been discussed yet. We have already heard about the term lattice energy before when learning about Hess's law. There are two types of lattice energy that we need to know. First is lattice formations, where energy is released when one mole of solid ionic compound is formed from its gaseous ion. Lattice formations will always have a negative value and will be used in this von Haber cycle as these cycles involve the formations of molecules. Next is lattice dissociations, the one we found in the solutions process. This energy is required to separate one mole of a solid compound into gases ion and will always have positive value. Another enthalpy that we need to use in von Haber cycle is ionization energy. It is the minimum energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gases atom. Let's take magnesium as an example. We know that magnesium has positive two charge. Therefore, magnesium will undergo first ionization energy to form Mg+, followed by second ionization energy to finally form Mg2+. Next is electron affinity. If ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron, electron affinity is the opposite. It is the energy required for one mole of gases atom to gain one mole of electrons. Initially, we have chlorine atom in gaseous states. Chlorine have negative one charge, hence it will gain electron to form Cl-. Let's try this one example. Draw a von Haber cycle for the formations of CaCl2 and determine its lattice energy. So this is our main focus. We're going to arrange the enthalpy with respect to the order of reactions taking place in von Haber cycle. We'll start with the enthalpy of formations of CaCl2, followed by enthalpy of atomizations of Ca. Then we're going to have the enthalpy of atomizations of Cl. The fourth going to be first ionizations energy of Ca. Then it will be second ionization energy of Ca. And the last one will be electron affinity of Cl. So, where will this latest energy be? So, it's going to be on number 7. Once we have rearranged the order of enthalpy involved in these reactions, we need to write the thermochemical equations. Instead of using delta HF as the enthalpy of formations, delta HA as the enthalpization enthalpy, or ionization energy as IE, let's just change it to number for each of the delta H. Check if the thermochemical equations daily with the delta H value that proposed for every one mole of substance. For enthalpy of formations of CaCl2, one mole of CaCl2 must be formed from its most stable states of Ca in solid and Cl2 in gases, giving delta H1 equal to negative 796 kJ per mole. For enthalpy of atomizations, one mole of calcium in solid will turn to one mole of calcium in gas, so we're going to have delta H2 of positive 179. As for enthalpy of atomizations of Cl, as its most stable state is in Cl2 in gaseous states, therefore, to keep one mole of Cl gases atom to be formed, 
Cl2 must be multiplied with half. So the value to get Cl atom gas is delta H3 of positive 1 to 2 kJ per mole. Calcium has positive 2 charge. To change calcium gas to C8 2 plus gas, calcium must undergo both first and second ionization's energy with delta H4 and delta H5. For chlorine, it has a charge of negative 1. So to form Cl minus in gas states, the chlorine must gain 1 mole of electron, giving electron affinity of delta H6. Lastly, the gases ion will combine to form solid again by releasing an amount of latest energy denoted by delta H7. We're going to put all the informations we've gone through just now to form von Haber cycle. First, we want to use energy cycle diagram. When we say cycle, the directions of arrow is not restricted to its signs of delta H. So you are free to choose to start from above or below, but please keep the order of enthalpy in place. We will start with enthalpy formations, so reactions with delta H1. Although we have defined the thermochemical equations, but we need to somehow modify it to tally with the formation's reactions. So when writing delta H, you don't need to include the per mole because we will change it a bit. Next, our reactions proceed with atomization reactions for both species with reactions for delta H2 and delta H3. Note that previously our delta H3 is defined as for one mole of gases atom. Since we initially have Cl2, therefore atomization takes place is for two mole of Cl. So please time the delta H3 with two. Your arrow for delta H3 will be slightly longer than delta H2. We're then going to change this gases atom into gases ions by removing or accepting electrons. We need to do the reactions one at a time. So sort everything for calcium, then only for two chlorine. Again, our enthalpy is for one mole of substance. So for two mole of Cl minus, we need to times this delta H6 with two. Lastly, both gases ions will combine and lattice formations of delta H7 takes place. So to find the value of delta H7 as in this example, we need to apply clockwise and anti-clockwise manner. So for these reactions, anti-clockwise comes price of only H1, while combinations of H2 until H7 belongs to the anti-clockwise manners. Therefore, you will get delta H1 equal to delta H2 plus 2 delta H3 plus delta H4 plus delta H5 plus 2 delta H6 plus delta H7. So we want to find this delta H7. You simply rearrange it to get only delta H7 on your one side. If the question specifically asks you to draw bond harbor cycle using energy level diagram, then you will need to represent it using energy level where we have origin as part of y-axis. We're going to do exactly the same thing as in energy cycle method, but with horizontal line indicating amount of each enthalpy. From origin, we're going to start our formations of CaCl2. Since delta H is negative, so the arrow must pointing downwards, indicating value is less than zero. In this method, you need to check your delta H to be tally with the directions of arrow. Make sure that your arrow touch each line to and from. We'll proceed with atomizations of Ca and Cl, where both have positive value, means their arrow are going to point upwards. Same goes to ionization energy, positive sign indicating value of enthalpy are positive and keep going to the top. Electron affinity with negative value must pointing downwards, and so latest energy. Simply compare both clockwise and anti-clockwise enthalpies. So your anti-clockwise will be on the H1. Your clockwise will be H2 until H7. Therefore, you will get delta H1 exactly the same as in energy cycle method. We have finished learning all the subtopics in chapter 2 thermochemistry. Now you may attempt all the tutorial questions so that we can discuss it in the next class. Thank you.